Hi everyone, it's Tim here again. So in the last few videos I've been talking a lot about home storage batteries and the relative pros and cons of different battery types and setups and such. Uh, but I'm here in my kitchen today because I want to talk about one particular aspect of home storage batteries and that's how much you could run of your house just using home storage batteries. So let's say it's the middle of winter, uh, first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening when there's no solar, what could you run just from your home storage batteries? So I've noticed from our in-house display that that always seems to happen in the kitchen because you're always running, you know, the cooker or whatever else it is, the kettle, the toaster, that sort of thing. And so the peak usage is always in the kitchen. So I'm going to show a few examples from our daily lives of when I've noticed the peak happening. And uh, in order to help me do that, I've got my, my wife here for the first time on camera. So she's going to help me with all of the dials and switches and such. So uh, this is Kat, my wife, and uh, say hello Kat to everyone at home. Hi everyone. And yeah, I'm going to switch over to the uh, the other view now, so I'll be behind the camera and you'll just be seeing Kat from now on, uh, which I'm sure you'll all be very pleased about. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. So this is our in-house display before we start the experiment, and it's running at, you know, 800, 900 watts, something like that. Uh, now we've got our new uh, air conditioning uh, based heating system running at the moment. So this is probably a little bit higher than the normal base load of our house, which is somewhere around about 100 watts, 150 watts, something like that. So the heating is adding a few hundred watts onto that, um, but that's actually quite a good test because in the middle of winter, the chances are we'll have our heating running. So this is a pretty good place to start and we'll add things on from here uh, to show what the peak usage is gonna be. So let's start with the first example and that's my breakfast first thing in the morning. Uh, Kat has usually gone to work by this point. I work from home, thankfully. So uh, what we're gonna do is Kat's gonna put on the kettle first. Now this is a three kilowatt kettle, so I'm expecting the in-house display to jump up quite considerably. There you go. So we're now running at 3.8 kilowatts. And then I usually put on a slice of toast. So that's one side of this two slot toaster here. And now we're up to 4.7 kilowatts. So yeah, that is pretty high. And now that is immediately higher than most of the home storage battery and inverter combinations that you can get. Uh, okay, you can, turn, uh, you can turn both of those off. Thanks, Kat. So okay, that's switched off now, back down to the, the 800 or 900 watts that we had before. So the reason that's important is because uh, one of the battery and inverter combinations that we're considering is the Give Energy uh, 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter. Uh, and the maximum charge and discharge rate of that system is 3.6 kilowatts. So if we were to get that system, we would now be required to draw from the grid for at least a couple of minutes while the toaster and the, the kettle is running. Um, so that's fine, um, but uh, let's move on to the next example. So that's a situation when I'm having my breakfast on my own during the week, um, but on the weekend when we're both here, uh, Kat normally has porridge in the winter. So uh, let's do the same experiment again, but add on the microwave when Kat's doing her porridge. So please put on the kettle and do one slice of toaster. And let's have a quick look and verify the, the in-house display. Yeah, we're back up to four and a half kilowatts. And now let's stick on the microwave. Usually takes a few seconds to register. Wow, okay, six kilowatts. Right, now turn everything off, thanks, Kat. Right, six kilowatts is uh, very, very high loads and uh, we don't normally draw much more than that, but there is one more example I'd like to show you. Right, so the last example I'd like to show you today is when we're cooking in the evening. So one of our favorite meals is lasagna with chips. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the oven on first. Now most people think ovens draw a lot of power, and that is true, but it's not as much as the kettle, interestingly enough. So let's see where it pop jumps up to. There you go, 3.25 kilowatts, and combined with the 900 uh, watts that we had before, that's about 2.3 kilowatts, something like that. Um, so compared to the kettle at three kilowatts, it's not actually as much, interestingly enough. Um, but when we do our chips, we use an air fryer. So let's put the air fryer on as well, please, Kat.
and that's gone up to 4.6 kilowatts. Okay, thanks Kat, you can turn those off. Right, so now I'm going to talk about all of the repercussions of all of this. Okay, so I may have lied a little bit earlier. Uh, it's me back again in front of the camera, just with some closing thoughts really to explain why I showed you that stuff. Um, really, it's a case of giving you something to think about if you're considering getting a home storage battery. What are you really expecting from the system? Are you expecting it to cover absolutely um, every ounce of your, your power consumption? Uh, are you expecting it to hit all those peak loads? Uh, in reality, most battery systems probably won't cover uh, all of your peak loads right at the top ends when you're making your tea and your toast and, your, and when you've got your oven on and all that stuff. But as long as it's covering the vast majority of your, your load, then you're probably okay. So for example, with the Give Energy system, that will cover 3.6 kilowatts. That will cover you for almost all of the day, apart from those few minutes each day where you're exceeding that, that limit. Um, something like the Libby or the, a Solar Edge battery or maybe the Powerwall, those will probably cover you up to five kilowatts or maybe even a little bit more in the case of the Powerwall. Uh, but um, you know, are you going to be saving that much by, by covering that extra load? You'll save probably a few pence a day, something in that region, because uh, once an oven, for example, is up to temperature, it shuts off. So it's only really um, operating at peak power for a couple of minutes before hitting that, uh, that uh, getting up to temperature. And again, when you're making your tea and your toast, that's only really over a couple of minutes a day. And maybe you're only drawing a, a kilowatt or so uh, during that time. So it's only a few pence per day, maybe, that you're, you're actually exceeding the limit of your battery. And that's only in the winter, of course. If you've got solar panels operating uh, during the summer, of course, you'll have some of that to draw on as well, which means that you're only really needing that extra peak power uh, in the winter time, uh, probably, you know, in the morning or the evening when there's no sun. So yeah, it's not necessarily critical that you cover all your peak loads. It's something to consider really as much as anything when you're uh, trying to work out what battery system to get and what you're expecting from that battery system. You know, if you're not expecting uh, to cover all your peak loads, then great. Uh, there's plenty of systems out there to choose from. If you really, really desperately want to save every last watt from uh, from being drawn from the grids, then you know, consider something like the Powerwall or a Solar Edge battery or the Libby, Libby battery, for example, from MyEnergy. Um, but uh, generally speaking, uh, most battery systems at 3.6 kilowatts or thereabouts are going to cover you for the vast majority of the time. So yeah, that's it really for me today, just giving you something to think about. And uh, I'll have more videos for you soon. Um, but for now, thank you very much for watching. Right, so the final example I'd like to show you today is when we're uh, cooking in the evening. Now, one of our favorite... <laughs> Thanks, Kat. <laughs> okay.